Don't worry. You don't need to watch this. You're not gonna learn a damn thing. Gone are the costumes, and the, for the last time, your lame dad sketches, and mostly what we have in part two is showing these artists sing about Satan, so that means they're bad. There's not anything in the second part that even remotely comes close to finding out that rock and roll can hard boil an egg and also kill flowers. Which, according to Mythbusters, isn't even true, so I don't even know what to believe anymore. Is Mick Jagger gonna make me breakfast and water my plants or not? The second part of the Hell's Bells anti-rock and roll documentary by Eric Holmberg is supposedly on the root of rock. It's not. You're better off just listening to your Roots albums. I forgot to mention in the first video that this series was made back in 1989, but really, I should just let this image of Eric speak for itself that it was indeed made in 89. At least we can still count on this documentary having a great soundtrack. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute, that's neither the roots or the grassroots. The second part mainly gets into the Church of Satan and how certain songs quote the Satanic Bible. As a means of systematically and objectively examining rock music for signs of the devil's influence. I had sex with a ram, sacrificed a goat, and ate a plate of sheep balls. Eric even has his own copy of the Satanic Bible, which, according to commenters, was written by me, apparently. Eric doesn't even like the fact that Anton LaVey has appeared in movies. Even playing the role of the devil in films like Rosemary's Baby and Invocation of My Demon Brother. Except he wasn't in Rosemary's Baby. You're thinking of the Devil's Reign. And you're really not going to like the fact that not only do I have a vinyl collection, but also one that's got music from The Exorcist on it. Where else can I get one album that not only features music from Serpico, but also Jonathan Livingston Seagull? Oh, and I guess Satanism also created the extras in Cruising. Satanism doesn't even believe in Satan, or any religious being for that matter, and is mainly about living in the here and now. But according to this, the Church of Satan worships Satan as a literal figure and their deity, which is not true. That's a lot of what this section is about, that and the mockery of Jesus. Jesus has become the focus of more ridicule in no, rock music no. than any other that personality. Means. Yes, but that's only when they don't have a war to sing about. And let's be fair, Drugs probably wrote most of these songs. Jefferson Airplane's song, The Son of Jesus, is filled with sacrilege, suggesting, among other things, that Jesus was involved in the occult. So don't listen to that song. Not every rock song is about Jesus having a child. This is like condemning all documentaries because Satanus exists. You're just upset because the Beatles are way bigger than you are. And if you're asking your viewers to give up the Beatles, I think a lot of them may have to say sayonara. Hell, even these people probably duct tape their Beatles albums together five minutes after this. But abases the Son of God by drawing a comparison between Jesus, JFK, Bob Dylan, Hindu mantras, and the Beatles. So, he also wrote, I am the walrus cuckoo ka -choo. And for someone who doesn't like subliminal messaging, this documentary sure uses a lot of it. These examples taken together make it obvious that Lenin's infamous quote about Christ meant a lot more than just a commentary on the unnatural adulation given to the Beatles. If I show Bob Dylan and Elvis in here, it'll make it look like they all think the same thing. But Eric would probably like the Christian Elvis albums. And of course, they bring up the more popular than Jesus comment. Dude, even the Vatican let that shit go. Take a hint. But really, this is all about occult expansion. Virtually dozens of groups openly sing about wickedness that until recently could not be found outside of occult bookstores. Until recently, you started out mentioning things from the 60s and early 70s. I really hope this whole thing ends with Eric saying, You know, maybe this music just isn't made for me. 
I should probably just listen to the newsboys instead. But I think I may know why he's taking things so personally. The bottom portion of this album, Blasphemy in the UK, is not shown because it features male genitalia. And since this is obviously Eric on the cover, he takes great offense to not being painted with the biggest penis imaginable. Oh, and because they mock The Last Supper, too. Graceland renames The Last Supper the first snack and pictorially suggests that the menu included a prostitute. You know, they're probably all doing that just to get a rise out of people like you. <laughs> I think it's working. I thought this was called The Root of Rock. I'm not seeing the roots of rock at all. I'm seeing someone telling me that I should be throwing my Classics 4 albums away because some other band has demons on the cover. Again, this documentary is doing a great job of introducing young people to some bands that they wouldn't have heard of otherwise. Much like Crucifixion, this documentary has some deep cuts. And with all this talk of these bands committing the sin of mockery, given that God is clearly George Burns, I think he has a bigger sense of humor than you give him credit for. But then Eric keeps pulling more stuff out of his mullet. Coven also renounces the work accomplished through the crucifixion. Anton LaVey himself would have been proud to have penned the lyrics of Burn the Cross. You don't know that! I thought you were just dealing in facts! That's what you said at the beginning of this! And I think you're getting distracted. This heresy, known as universalism, has become extremely popular of late. What does that have to do with the roots of rock and roll? Get to rock being created by Johnny Johnston after going to a Bill Haley and his Comets concert. Look, I'm willing to go along with any piece of fiction at this point. The Onion does a more realistic job at documenting music. And I'm failing to see the problem here. The inside of this album by Earth, Wind & Fire shows various religious symbols. Christian, mixed in with symbols for Hinduism, Buddhism, and the occult. Oh no! Coexisting with each other and acknowledging other religions! Huh. Blasphemy! Here's another album he doesn't like, largely for expressing togetherness, while simultaneously looking like Eric Holmberg. Slander. Eric was gonna use My Sweet Lord, but he didn't want to get sued by the chiffons. No one here is safe. Harrison is joined by a host of other rock artists who have expressed in one way or another this philosophy. With Eastern... Prince was a Jehovah's Witness, you dork! According to this, Jesus would hate universalism because only through him can you reach heaven. So, religious tolerance is for saps. If universalism is true, then not only is Jesus a liar for saying it was a false and demonic doctrine, he is also the stupidest man that ever lived. Um, Jesus didn't hate or condemn anyone there. You could learn something from Jesus. <laughs> and Elvis. They then hate on the cars for mocking Jesus by showing him hanging out with sinners. But that is what Jesus did. While few, if any, of the artists involved are card-carrying devil worshippers, is it just a coincidence that the satanic scriptures are being so clearly fulfilled? No, I'm sure it's not a coincidence. I'm sure that Rick Ocasek was sent here to bring us all to hell in a handbasket. And make up your mind, do you want people to wear crosses or not? Virtually millions of young people today think nothing of wearing the cross around their neck or dangling from their ears, while engaging in everything from sexual immorality to and Jesus would have loved and hung out with every single one of them. Also, Billy Idol is singing about a girl that he still loves who is getting married to someone else, not Satanism. And as for Prince, like I said earlier, he was a religious man. Prince's music is filled with allusions to Jesus and the cross, leading the spiritually naive into thinking that he is some new breed of Christian. I'm talking about sexual Oh, you just don't like him because he's the wrong kind of Christian. Moving on to people who the fans of this documentary secretly masturbate to every week. Ex-porn star, Time Magazine cover girl, and according to polls, one of the most admired and influential... Uh, but she's not an ex-porn star. 
I'm so shocked that they don't like Madonna or sexuality. In May of 1985, Madonna told Spin Magazine that crucifixes are sexy because there's a naked man on them. Again, you know she's just trying to piss off people like you. I knew I should have been drinking a Pepsi while watching this. And still, soft drink companies clamor for her endorsement. Except for the time Pepsi ceased showing the commercial and withdrew their sponsorship because of the very video you're showing. This is all really just repeating the same things over and over again. He's upset about the imagery of the crucifixion and rock and roll artists wearing the cross. This is repeated so much. So, so, so much. Which is it for us? The power of God? Or an object of indifference or ridicule? If you're not sure, but are drawn to and enjoy these artists, that question has probably already been answered. Well, wait, what about what you said at the beginning? So don't anybody worry. We're not trying to control what people listen to. <laughs> Look, he's not telling you not to listen to rock music. Some people like spending their eternity damned in an eternal hellfire. But wait, there's more, unfortunately. This symbol, found in the Satanic Bible, finds its way onto a Duran Duran album cover. The symbol for sulfur? Not even Blue Oyster Cult is safe. Sure, these songs may sound innocent, but what if they aren't? Again. Uh... Sure. I think I know why he hates some of these people. Transsexual rock artist Wayne County could very well have had this exact scripture in mind when he wrote Storm the Gates of Heaven. <laughs> I'm guessing you wouldn't like any music that a transsexual artist put out. They even damned Depeche Mode for suggesting that God has a sense of humor. <laughs> Burn your Depeche Mode albums at once. Our God is a square God. Dear God by Ecstasy is brought up, and it's a song that was so controversial it caused someone to send a bomb threat to a radio station. So, stop throwing stones, movie. Now it's mainly about not liking music that even remotely questions religion. Just don't listen to these particular songs. Rock and roll has a pretty wide variety of topics. Hell, it brings up Missionary Man, which is a song about how Annie Lennox dabbled in the Hare Krishna after being married to one. So? We're almost to the end of part two, which means take this crushed fortune with you. The only hypocrisy that will be judged by God when you stand before him will be your own. Don't cop out and try to hide behind someone else's sin. It doesn't work. Okay, Mr. Madonna Bad, Roy Moore Good. The next part of the film is on the fruit of rock. And I swear to God, if it doesn't feature Eric dressed as a giant apple while condemning the works of the turtles, then this documentary will have all been for nothing. Rebellion sells in rock, and for the hardest types, what can be more rebellious than to revile Christ and blaspheme God? 